everyone, my name is Oksana and welcome to my channel about photography. I would like to introduce you to my new series called Iconic Photos Dissect, where we will be talking about famous photos and dissect how they were created. I hope this series will inspire you and you learn something new. And I would like to start with legendary Marilyn Monroe. I don't think I need to tell you who she was. During her unfortunately short life, she has been photographed by many famous photographers. She really loved the camera, and I think camera really loved her back. I am sure that most of you recognize this photograph and her famous white dress. It was taken in 1954 by Monroe's photographer and friend Sam Shaw, who was hired to shoot a poster for Billy Wilder's movie Seven Years of Itch in New York. He staged the scene by putting Marilyn over the subway grate so the warp of air was blowing her dress up. Shaw got the idea while walking around Coney Island and seeing women exiting a ride and having their skirts blow up by the air from below ground at Speedler Chase Park's famous attraction, so-called Blowhole Theater. After Shaw was invited to be a photographer for the Seven Year Itch movie with Marilyn and reading the dialogue for the scene, he saw the opportunity to implement it and suggested to the producer Charles Feldman that it could be great for poster image for the film. Despite the fact that the movie scene was shot around 2 a.m. outside Translux Theater on Lexington Avenue in New York, they gathered quite a crowd to watch it. It is believed that there was more than 400 people around the set, mostly men who were screaming higher, higher, while Marilyn's skirt would fly up. In this shot, you can see better what kind of lightning was used. Those look like vintage classic film studio lights made by Moll Richardson. They were very popular in Hollywood at the time. After filming was finished, Shah arranged the moment to be recreated for press protocol, organizing the event and placing himself in the best position. As Monroe posed with her dress lifted by the air, she turned to him shouting, Hey, some spade! He pressed the shutter of what is to believe to be the Rolleiflex camera. Some spade was apparently a nickname Marilyn gave him. And this is how this particular photo was created. It's interesting because it also has some audience and the press on the background. We also got interesting backlight. I'm just not sure whether it's camera flash or studio light. By the size of it, it could possibly be camera flash, which fired at the same time. The pictures from the shoot were published in newspapers and magazines around the world, which was great publicity for the film and Marilyn herself. This also put some Shah on a map. The only unhappy person at the shoot was Marilyn's husband and famous baseball player, Joe DiMaggio, who was very jealous. He stormed of the set saying, I've had enough. It is believed that he beat Marilyn up in the hotel after the shoot, which is very sad, and that this accident might have led to the divorce just after nine months of their marriage. Though there are also some other stories about why they divorced. Another interesting fact is that the filming done that night could not be used due to too much noise on the set and it was reshot in the studio in LA. One of the photos from the shoot was displayed on Times Square as a billboard for the Seven Year Age movie. The reactions to the billboard were very different. Some people loved it and some not so much. One woman said in the interview, what has Marilyn Monroe got that the million other women have and prefer not to show? The image was pretty provocative for that time, but I think Marilyn made it look effortless and almost innocent. 
What do you think? Please let me know in the comments. The movie in the photo also inspired the artist John Stuart Johnson II to create a giant 26 feet tall sculpture of Marilyn Monroe, which now resides in Palm Springs, California, and is very popular tourist attraction. The white dress Marilyn Monroe was wearing is considered one of the history's most famous dresses. It was created by costume designer William Trevilla, who called it that silly little dress, but little did he know then. Even though everyone calls it Marilyn's white dress, it was actually bone colored, not white. During that time, dresses could not be plain white because the production lights would make them look grayish. After Marilyn's death, actress Debbie Reynolds, who was collecting Hollywood costumes, purchased the dress for just $200 and then sold it in 2011 at the auction for over $5 million. Not bad, I must say, for that silly little dress. Another iconic image of Marilyn Monroe shot in 1954, this time by Milton Green in his New York studio. Milton and Marilyn were also friends and partners, and at some point she even lived with him and his family in his house. He shot more than 4,000 photos of her between 1953 and 1957, till they went separate ways because of her then-husband screenwriter Arthur Miller. In 1955, Milton and Marilyn created Marilyn Monroe Productions, where Marilyn was a star and Milton was director and producer. But Marilyn's husband didn't really like that idea, especially financial part, where a percentage of the money was going to Milton. But now let's get back to the image. The dress Marilyn Monroe is wearing was two sizes too small. Milton borrowed it from New York designer Harbert Casper. The ill-fitting outfit resulted in a bit awkward pose where Marilyn is trying to hold the dress up. But despite all of that, I think she looks angelic and innocent, yet seductive, which was the signature Marilyn's look. Of course, there is more than one image from that session. She used to always play in front of the photo camera like she would in front of the film camera. I can only imagine how magical it was to photograph her. Just set the lights and the scene up and she will do the rest. I couldn't find the exact information which camera Milton Green used for these photos, but most likely was Rolleiflex camera as well which is square format camera. It is known for its simple build, but high quality optics. A lot of fashion photographers of that time turned to that camera instead of heavy and bulky field cameras. I found several photos of Milton using it around that time. I love the soft lightning falling on Marilyn, a bit stronger from one side. I could assume those were studio lights. I always analyze the catch light in the eyes to figure out what light setup was used. This particular image shows it best. I see one main light to the left and two smaller lights to the right and in the middle. As a background, I believe he used blue paper backdrop and some black fabric, possibly velvet. Is it just me? who wants to take a photo into Photoshop and clean up all the dirt under her feet. Obviously, it wasn't the precious paper and it looks like they didn't really care that much about it. Next series of images are called In Bed with Marilyn Monroe. Were taken in 1961 by celebrity photographer Douglas Kirkland for Look Magazine's 25th anniversary and made him very famous at a very young age of 27. By the way, he is still alive and I even found his Instagram, but I'm not sure if it's run by him. Here is a very cool photo of him back in the days. The shoot with Marilyn was supposed to take place at photographic studio in Hollywood. 
It was rainy evening, Marilyn was late. Like about two hours late. Everyone started to worry, but her manager said, she is usually late, but always show up. She indeed showed up at about 9.30 p.m. Photographer recalls that Marilyn was running the show on this shoot, probably because she sensed that he was young and experienced and kind of shy. The photo shoot started with a whole crew, but at some point she asked everyone to leave the room by saying, I want to be alone with this boy. Her suggestions for the shoot were to include white sheets, Tom Perignon champagne, and Frank Sinatra records. Marilyn was playing in bed in white sheets and Douglas was shooting continuously, just stopping to change the film. The best, most iconic images were shot from above. There was a stairway leading up the storage container. He got the bed right under it and took a chance climbing up there. It is awesome to also have so many cool behind the scenes images from that shoot. Obviously, they were not alone the whole time. Whoever was with them also climbed up. Notice that to make everything white in your photos, they placed white paper backdrop under the mattress. Everything just fell into place and there were many beautiful photos from that shoot. There was one image that Marilyn herself particularly liked, where she was lying horizontally holding the pillow. By Kirkland recollection, she said, this is the one I like the most, because that girl is the kind of girl any man would like to be in bed with, even a truck driver. Looking through behind the scene pictures, I can see that there was soft light coming through the door on the left and possibly some weaker light through the door on the opposite side. It was definitely an artificial light source since it was shot late in the evening, but it really reminds me of the natural window light. Probably it can, it can be easily replicated by using window light. I also love the softness and airness the film grain gives the photos. We know exactly which camera was used for this photo shoot. It was medium format film camera Hasselblad 500C. This is a later version of this camera. Kirkland's camera was auctioned by Christie's Auction House in 2019. It was estimated at two to three hundred thousand dollars, together with two camera bags, two lenses, 50 millimeters and 150 millimeters, and also two 40 by 60 limited edition archival pigment prints, obviously of Marilyn Monroe. Though I could not find any information whether it was sold and for how much. This camera is considered one of the best and most revolutionary film cameras of its kind, and it was modified a lot of times through the years. Most often it was used for the studio shooting. I must say it is pretty heavy camera. A typical roll of 120 film used with this camera has just 12 frames in it. Can you imagine how many rolls of film photographer had to use and how fast he had to change them to keep up with Marilyn Monroe? Now in digital world we are just spoiled and we do not count those frames and how to change the film, aren't we? This will be all for today. Let me know in comments below how you like my new series. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click that bell below to be notified when my next videos come out. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I see you next time. Bye bye!